hello uh before we dig in uh and and look at this uh at this uh vintage computer i just thought i'd make a comment or two uh this is uh the micro 68 it was made by a company called um, electronic product associations associates in san diego uh, this is from 1975 i think it's a pretty early model um I've only seen these in pictures and as an admirer of early CPU trainers I never thought I'd get to see one of these in the wild. I never thought I'd get to touch one and uh, as luck would have it I now own one. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate that. Uh, I thought perhaps I could port over a program from the Heathkit ET3400 but they've got very different monitors. I'm not that good of a programmer and it would be better if I just test the system using a a program that was published in the June 1976 edition of Radio Electronics and I'm only aware of this because of uh, information I got from some a couple of very helpful websites for the E for the uh, I'm sorry for the micro 68 uh, and as vintage computers go I feel this micro 68 is a very under documented um, uh, on the web uh, and that, that's a shame because this is a marvelous machine anyway um, it's my honor to uh, open this thing up and demonstrate it and, and show you what it does. This is a recent acquisition. I am very proud to own it. It's an EPA 6800. No, yeah, EPA Micro 68 from 1975. It has spent many, many years inside of this nice briefcase. Uh, the other ones that I have seen have all been in a similar briefcase. I don't know if, if um, that's a coincidence or by design, but take a look at this. Isn't this something? I mean, um, look at that. I mean, that's it's just amazing. Uh, it's got this beautiful uh, smoke glass uh, lid. Uh, let me get you a little close up in there. See what we're dealing with here. I mean, those those chips are just beautiful ceramic chips from date code 1975. Anyway, I don't know. It, it runs on a Motorola 6800. I'm not much of a programmer and I'm even less of a programmer on a Motorola 6800. I have some experience uh, you know with the Heathkit ET3400 but when I say some I mean not much but uh, I am going to uh, uh, enter a program into this and let me power it up and uh, execute it and demonstrate this to you and the reason why I'm doing this let me hit the reset button uh, let me make sure you can see this maybe I'll turn this there you go uh, I'll also uh, rearrange the uh, camera so you get a good view of what's going on um, maybe with less reflection as well so uh, hang tight and uh, I'll get us rolling soon. I'm going to start entering code uh, that I found on uh, the website decodesystems.com for the EPA Micro 68. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's going to do because it's non-specific, but I think it's going to count to six. Um, and this is actually a pretty long piece of code. It's, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, hex 50 um, uh, uh, commands so uh, converting uh, converting let me open up the calculator here and set it on scientific no set it on uh, programmer and convert 50 to hex uh, sorry hex 50 to so it's a decimal 80 um, uh, 80 commands so I'm going to uh, enter these now this is 
hit the reset button. Uh, can you see the screen? It says EPA up. I'm going to hit the E button for examine. Examine 0000 because that's the first command. Then I'm going to hit the change button. And I'm going to enter DE. Let me see if I hit auto, it should go to the next one. Let's see what happens. Nope. Let's try this again. 0000, zero, zero, zero is DE. Let me hit forward. Okay. Um, 45. I'll be talking to myself here for a little bit while I do this. 4FA748. Well, I uh, just thought I'd let you know that uh, as I was entering all this data, I got about three quarters of the way through and uh, the computer quit working. And uh, so I felt around and the chips were quite hot. Uh, so I unplugged it for a minute and, uh, and you know, it's back up. Uh, it's back to EPA up just like before, but um, uh, it inexplicably quit working and I think I'm going to take a minute to check voltages uh, before I carry on. Um, so let's see. This is uh, it's coming in for a, a power transformer of a, a wall work, but it's uh, coming in as AC. So oops, let me set this to AC, and it should be something in the um, um, not too high a voltage range, like something probably around 14 volts, if I. And let's see if it is. I got 7.7 .7 volts AC. Interesting. Okay. So then let's go and go to the bridge. Put this over to DC. And we can see that there is a, uh, uh, a bridge, a diode bridge right there. I've never quite seen one like that, but I know that's what it is. Um, so let's take a, a measurement on that and see what kind of DC voltage we're getting. And I'm reading uh, 7.7 I'm reading nothing, so I'm obviously doing this wrong. Okay, so that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and pull a... Um, uh, let's see, this is ground, and see how many volts I'm getting here at this, I'm getting 4.87 volts uh, at the TTL chips, so that's 4.84, that's actually a little low, it's only supposed to be about 5% off of 5 volts, um, 4.92, 4.84 that's a little concerning let me take a wild guess and figure this is the uh, uh, the VCC and yes it is it is a little concerning that um, I'm not getting 5 volts I'm getting 4.87 um, I suppose it's running and I'll just have to check the uh, the specs. That's all. Okay, I can tell you right now on the um, pin 40 on uh, on the uh, 6800 is not uh, VCC because I'm only getting three volts off of that. It's obviously a signal line. Um, so let's see. Try this guy right here. Yeah, 4.85. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna carry on um, start from the beginning and try to re-enter that code I was going along pretty good and then that happened um, so let me pause and see what happens okay I've got it all entered uh, I actually have the lid up and a little fan on I can feel some heat coming off of these chips um, I don't know if that's normal or not but 
No, nah, they're not hot. But the, just to be on the safe side, I don't want to get three quarters of the way through my entering my program and then find out that uh, uh, it's shut off because it got too hot. So uh, uh, we're good. So uh, let me go back to the beginning. Zero, zero, so examine zero 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 zero. <laughs> I've got it all entered. You see, I got this little fan blowing on uh, on the unit right here. Um, I don't think it's really a thermal problem, but I put the lid up and I got the fan going just in case. Um, they do seem a lot warmer than, say, a 6502 might feel. Um, uh, but I'm ready to execute. So, all right. So let's put the lid down ever so gently and let's just say examine zero 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 and do oh do zero 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 maybe oh look how about that it's counting Try that again without the lid. Okay, so there's the program executing. And I'm going to uh, hit the reset button. Lift the lid. And I'm going to say do. Zero, 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 zero. There she goes. I gotta tell you, I'm a I'm a big fan of single board computers. I'm a collector. I have uh, Kim ones, Sim ones, AIM 65s. I've I've made my own. I've got all kinds of Z80 machines, but this is got to be the most uncommon and the most beautiful of all of them. And I feel because it's so hard to find, I feel really privileged to be able to actually program this and, and make this video. Uh, I have been online. There's very little um, uh, information out there on the web about uh, the EPA Micro 68. There is some um, uh, from a few years back that is excellent. Um, but I mean, even, even the Kim one has uh, uh, much, much more um, coverage and you know when you think about it this is a 1975 date coded machine Kim one was 1976 this this predates um, probably the Kim one uh, and the 6502 in general and it definitely predates the Apple one um, it's an amazing and very beautiful machine let me put the lid down um, it's kind of got like the look of a stereo system from the from the 70s, uh, it's got that smoke glass, uh, uh, the the curves, just just beautiful. You don't even like. I got a fingerprint on it. I just got to clean it up. You just can't even get this thing dirty. It's so, you know, you don't want to. It's just so beautiful. It's more um, of a work of art, I think, uh, than any other single board computer out there. And you got to remember, this was done before most of them. Um, I'm not aware of any single board computer. Uh, that was manufactured uh, in any uh, quantity I'm aware of um, uh, prior uh, to this, you know, to this one being made. So this is just an amazing machine. I'm delighted to own it. Uh, I, I feel honored and uh, very fortunate. And I hope uh, this video uh, would encourage somebody who may have one of these. Uh, tucked away somewhere uh, to bring it out and uh, share it with uh, um, the next generation of people uh, who appreciate uh, these old uh, early home computers because this is exactly that a home computer thank you very much for watching this